So the third mechanism is what's called strain hardening. Um, if you plastic deform a metal at room temperature, it typically makes it harder and stronger. This is what's called strain hardening or cold working. Um, so what's going on here is, let's say if we deform it, um, it usually is going to reduce the cross-sectional area, maybe by rolling it um, or doing some other process. It can be pulling it. There's lots of different ways to reduce the cross-sectional area. And so we can figure out the percent cold work by looking at the reduction in area. Reduction in the area. Where have I heard that before? Ductility. We can also look at, when we're talking about ductility, we look at the percent reduction in area before failure as a way of measuring how ductile material is. Or in this case, how much cold work it could take before it failed. So as the amount of cold working increases, as the amount of cold working increases, we see that our stress strain curve changes. Now this is for a low carbon steel, and as you look here, you see as we add more and more cold work to it, well, what do you know? It's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So 0% cold work, it, you know, can take a whole lot of strain before failure, but it begins to deform very, very quickly, right around here. Well, I say quickly, but that's, that's a lot of stress. But after doing 24% cold work and really compressing it, well, it takes a lot more stress before it begins to deform to plastically deform, but it also fails after a lot less deformation. It's more brittle. So by cold working something, you are making it more brittle, but stronger. Um, and that increases its yield strength, increases its tensile strength, but the ductility is decreasing. Ductility is decreasing each time. Okay, so what's going on with this strain hardening? What you have to remember is, or realize, is that there are more than one dislocation in our particular case. Okay, there's more than one dislocation inside of our material. Now, as you might guess, if there's two compressive stresses over here, they are not going to like it, okay? They are going to repel each other, which is, guess what, going to keep them from moving towards each other. Also, if we have ones that are opposite, so let's say there's compressive above and tensile below, and then tensile above and compressive below, and we bring them close together, guess what? They're gonna cancel each other out. So in either case, we are making it so that this material does not like what's going on. Or sorry, these dislocations do not like what's going on. We're either keeping them from being able to move because they're repelling each other and they're gonna only have one direction they can go instead of two, or we are bringing them closer together and causing them to annihilate each other. Either case is gonna happen because we are reducing the area. It goes from this to this. Those dislocations have a lot less room in there and so they're being moved closer together and that's what's strengthening our material, okay? That's what's strengthening our material. So that is why that work is helping it out. Now let's talk about this a little bit more. So dislocation density, dislocation density. As you see right here, it's gonna be bringing these closer together. And so dislocation density is we're talking about how many dislocations we have in a particular volume. So, this is the total dislocation length over a unit of volume. And in an undeformed metal, it's typically 10 to the 5 to 10 to the 6 millimeters um, per millimeter squared. But the dislocation density increases with increased deformation. And when we cold work the metal, there's a lot more dislocations, or at least there's a lot more dislocations in a smaller space because we're bringing them closer together. And also just simply because we're sometimes making deformations, making more dislocations by working it. As dislocations are then canceling each other out and they're um, repelling each other, there's all this kind of craziness that happen, happening inside. So when we work a material, we're forming new dislocations and we're also bringing them closer together. We're squishing everything together. Um, and so as that dislocation density increases, 
the distance between dislocations decreases. Um, and so on average, the dislocation strain interactions are repulsive, so they could also be attractive if we're trying to cancel each other out. And so the dislocation motion will be hindered by the presence of other dislocations. Like I said, they're repelling each other, they don't want to go that direction, and so they can't move. But if there's a lot of them surrounding me, well, I can't move in any direction. And so on average, it's going to make it stronger. So that's it for this time. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this helps you. See you all later. Goodbye.